So John, with the introduction of the vSAN Express storage architecture, that really changed a lot for us, but uh, we didn't stop there. We've introduced new features in vSAN 8 Update 1 and Update 2. Well, what would you like to share with regards to what are the key features that we introduced since that time? So there's quite a few, um, but I really want to focus on just kind of four right now. So some of which are about the management capabilities and just operationally making it easier. Um, and one of these is this new automatic policy management. Um, historically, you know, we've done a lot of education about the different RAID levels and policies and Stripe whips with original storage architecture. And, um, you know, we kind of understand that maybe you want to think a little bit less about this. And so looking at the number of hosts in the cluster, looking at the cluster configuration, stretch versus not stretched, we're going to make some assumptions about what you probably want for that policy. And we're going to recommend that. Yeah, and that's one of the things that has been so important for us in simply trying to make this solution easier. Ultimately, the Express Storage architecture unlocked a lot of capabilities uh, in terms of performance, but it allowed us to make it easier. But let's not forget the performance side. And one of the things that we introduced in vSAN 8 Update 1 and Update 2 is a new adaptive write path. So this is going to choose one of to a possible write paths that will write the data in the most efficient way and therefore the fastest way. And that's something that we've seen extraordinary improvements on a new architecture that was already fast as it is. Yeah, and, and write throughput is historically, just across storage platforms in general, one of, you know, in large block writes are particularly particularly something that's often very difficult. It's one of kind of the four corner benchmarks you run to understand the limitations of the platform. And looking at some of the benchmarks from the original storage architecture against the express storage architecture with this adaptive write path, um, we are seeing multiplicative impacts on performance. If you have, you know, you should always be looking at ESA for any greenfield deployments going forward. But if you're looking at large write throughput, ESA has some amazing capabilities. Absolutely. And because ESA is so efficient, we generally use about one third of the resources uh, to process each and every IO. That means that we've been able to increase uh, the number of VMs per host from 200 up to 500 uh, VMs per host. Now, is that a great uh, option for you? Well, it really depends based off of your conditions. And the other thing is I'm going to need Pete you to draw 500 little boxes here <laughs> um, because our, our maximum number of virtual me virtual machines that are supported has gone from 200 to 500. Um, and you may think I don't actually want 500 VMs on a host, and that's fine. But this is also a, a support limitation that we were able to raise because of the resource efficiency, because of the compute efficiency. Um, that's going into express storage architecture. And for especially virtual desktop use cases, as well as test dev workflows that are very dense, these are cases where people are sometimes hitting the wall on that 200, um, especially as modern cores and, and hosts can significantly um, co-op in number. Indeed, and uh, perhaps one of the most important aspects of the improvements that we've made in vSAN 8 Update 1 and Update 2 for the Express Storage Architecture is it really allowed us to be able to introduce uh, what we now refer to as vSAN Max, our fully disaggregated centralized shared storage solution for vSphere clusters. And it is the power of vSAN ESA that gives us this ability to provide this world-class, fully distributed storage uh, solution for our customers. Thank you.